Okay, hopefully I'll be able to finish your chapter up. Um, we left off with Addison's disease. That's um, insufficient um, production from the um, adrenal glands. And if you look at the add to Addison's disease, people with Addison's disease need to add sodium. So add salt to their food and they need to add sugar. You can think of it like that in a simplified way. So they need to add sugar, add salt. And then if you think, okay, if they need to add salt, they have low sodium. That means they're going to have um, hypovolemia, um, low blood pressure. If they have need to add sugar, that means they have hypoglycemia. So think of Addison's disease as all of the things that they need to add to their diet. The next problem is Cushing syndrome, and it's kind of opposite of Addison's disease. This time we have too many corticosteroids. And in fact, um, the most common cause of Cushing syndrome is prolonged administration of high doses of corticosteroids. So um, people like your, your respiratory or your COPD patients that have to take a lot of corticosteroids or maybe people with um, autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis that take high doses of prolonged therapy of corticosteroids, they can often develop Cushing syndrome. So if you can remember back when I taught you about corticosteroids and the side effects of those, that can help you know the signs and symptoms of Cushing syndrome. Um, but we'll review that. So with Cushing syndrome, this is an excellent video to watch. It's only about seven minutes long, so I strongly encourage you to do that. But to sum it up, we have um, truncal obesity with slender extremities. So um, they are overweight, but it's all right here in the middle area. Arms and legs are, are thin. Um, fragile skin, which went with when I taught you about topical corticosteroids, that was a, a danger of that is it thins the skin. What's often described as a moon face or this, this wide face, and you can see maybe some hirsutism, so unwanted hair growth on the face. Osteoporosis, we talked about that as being a side effect of prolonged corticosteroid therapy is it weakens the bones and high blood sugar. This is opposite of Addison's disease where we had low blood sugar. This time we have high blood sugar. We're also going to have, unlike Addison's disease, we're going to have a high blood pressure with Cushing syndrome. And then slow healing and inability to fight off infection. So a lot of your nursing interventions really pertain to the signs and symptoms. So for instance, with this um, osteoporosis, they're at very high risk for fractures. So our fall precautions would come into play here and protecting them from falls. Um, high blood sugar, of course, nursing interventions are going to be monitoring and treating um, hyperglycemia or diabetes type 2. And then with this slow healing and unable to fight off infection, um, make sure that they're avoiding people that have infections. Um, recognizing signs and symptoms like a sore throat early on. Here's a, another chart showing even more symptoms of Cushing syndrome. Some of these we already talked about, like the upper body obesity with thin arms and legs, the round or moon face, high blood sugar, high blood pressure, um, can cause an increase in acne, um, water retention, which again is opposite of Addison's disease where we had um, dehydration, um, thin skin and bruising, poor wound healing, severe depression, um, which if you had all of these symptoms, I would be depressed too. Um, sleep disorders, fatigue. And again, this is kind of the opposite of Addison's disease. So treatment wise, um, with Addison's disease, we're going to administer corticosteroids because they don't have enough corticosteroids. So treatment for Addison's disease is pretty straightforward, administering um, corticosteroids. With um, Cushing's disease, it's a little bit different. If the cause is administration of synthetic glucocorticoids, which is the most common cause, of course we're going to um, gradually withdraw those. We can't withdraw, withdraw those abruptly or it can cause problems, but gradually withdraw those. Um, if it's because of the adrenal gland itself, then we're back to the, the same with most just like with the pituitary gland, we can do drug therapy to suppress the adrenal gland, radiation, or, or surgery even to remove it if that's 
the case. The last disorder in this chapter is pheochromocytoma, and I strongly encourage you to watch this video. It's only a couple of minutes long, and it's very good because your book was pretty skimpy on um, pheochromocytoma, but it also has to do with the adrenal gland, but it has to do with that, that other side. Um, we've been talking about mainly the cortex of the adrenal gland where we get corticosteroid, for instance. Um, this one, the pheochromocytoma deals more with the medulla of the adrenal gland where we have that adrenaline or fight or flight. And so you can think of pheochromocytoma as too much adrenaline. And so we see a lot of hypers, hyper, 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 hypertension, hypermetabolism, hyperglycemia. So your fight or flight has been activated and it's not getting turned off. So all of the things that you would do in fight or flight mode um, happen out of control with pheochromocytoma. The probably most dangerous here is this hypertension. We can get really, really high blood pressure and you know that can cause a stroke if left unchecked. Here's some other things which totally makes sense if you're talking about um, fight or flight being activated. So we have um, fast heartbeat, shaking, um, anxiety, here we have some others. Constipation, that's because it, um, during fight or flight, we're going to uh, shunt blood from unnecessary places like the digestive system. So uh, constipation can result in even um, maybe some nausea and abdominal pain because again, lack of blood supply to the GI system. Pallor, that's going to happen because we're going to shunt blood away from the skin. Um, body thinks it needs it for more important things, so we take it away from the skin. It causes um, pallor in the skin. Um, when someone says they're scared to death, often we picture someone who's pale. Um, elevated blood sugar is going to happen, so hyperglycemia and that again is a direct result of activation of the fight or flight. Even if they don't eat, so they you might be thinking, well, if we have nausea and abdominal pain, um, how are we going to have elevated blood sugar? Well, remember, a lot of glycogen is stored in the liver, and when fight or flight is activated, the liver dumps that gl stored glycogen into the bloodstream um, to give extra food to the cells. So elevated blood sugar is going to happen with pheochromocytoma. So finally, I just had this last little slide on a brief pharmacology. And when you're thinking too much or too little, so going back to that yin and yang, um, so on page 1028 in your textbook, I want you to note fluoronef and prednisone and cortef, these treat adrenal insufficiency. So these are corticosteroids. If someone has Addison's disease, they have adrenal insufficiency. We're just going to replace, synthetically replace what they're missing. Uh, opposite end of the spectrum, if they, if we need to suppress adrenal function because maybe they have cushion syndrome, we can use these uh, mitotain or nizerol. And these are going to do the opposite. They suppress adrenal function. Going back to page 1014, where we were first talking about um, hyperpituitarism, um, gigantism, that sort of thing. So parladel and sandostatin are going to suppress pituitary activity, or we could just take it out with those giant scissor crazy things. But um, parladel and sandostatin suppress pituitary activity, so we would use these for hyperpituitarism. And if we have an underactive pituitary, we just replace the deficient hormone. So for instance, if they're um, low on ADH or vasopressin, um, we just give them synthetic vasopressin. A low on growth hormone, we replace the growth hormone, and so on and so forth. So just to review, going back to the pituitary gland that's in the brain, it releases a lot of hormones. Hormones are chemical messengers, and sometimes the pituitary gland is called the master gland. Um, it is just like a manager. It loves to tell other people what to do. It doesn't really do anything itself. It just sends a lot of messages to other parts of the body and tells them what to do. And so problems associated with the pituitary gland, too much, too little. So if we have um, hyperpituitarism, too much, um, too much growth hormone, we can run into um, gigantism in a child or acromegaly if it's an adult. Um, again, it just depends on the age of onset. If we don't have enough um, under hypo 
pituitarism, then we can run into dwarfism in a child, or um, it's just called hypopituitarism in an adult because they can't shrink back to a dwarf after they've already reached their adult height. So again, treatment, either um, shutting it down if it's make, if it's overreacting or, or replacing what's missing. Um, we also had this one, the ADH, antidiuretic hormone. If we have um, too much antidiuretic hormone, then we're not going to diurese. We're going to retain fluid, and we call that SIADH, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. We're going to bloat up because we're retaining all of this fluid. We're not going to make any pee, super high blood pressure because all of our fluid's backing up. Or we can have the opposite. If we don't have enough antidiuretic hormone or we're deficient in our antidiuretic hormone, then we have what's called diabetes insipidus where we're making massive amounts of urine and it causes us to be dehydrated So, or hypovolemic and we're going to have our blood pressure drop, um, all of those other tachycardia associated with um, low fluid volume and we can even go into hypovolemic shock if it's not corrected. And then when we look over here at this one, ACTH, which has to do with the adrenal gland, this sends a message to that adrenal gland that sits on top of the kidney and the adrenal gland has some multiple functions and for one thing it activates our fight or flight and so if there's too much stimulation of the adrenal gland so we have um, overproduction of adrenaline, we have pheochromocytoma, where we have hyper, 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 hyper everything, hyperglycemia, hypertension, and hyperthermia, so metabolism is cranked up way too high, and um, going to cause a stroke if we don't do something about it. On the other side, other part of the adrenal gland, we have those corticosteroids that control um, like our water and sodium retention and our blood sugar and um, part of our um, activation to ward off infection or the inflammatory process. So if we don't have enough, um, we have Addison's disease. So we have low sodium. We've got to eat lots of salt. We have low blood sugar. So we need to add salt and add sugar to our diet. We have low blood pressure as a result. So um, solution, we're going to add corticosteroids into the to their medication regimen to, to um, make up for what's lost and then on the opposite side of that when we have too many corticosteroids we call that Cushing's syndrome it's a collection of signs and symptoms that result from too many corticosteroids and so we get that truncal obesity with slender extremities um, poor ability to fight off infection um, weakens the bones with osteoporosis so they can break their bones real easily and in this case we either are going to taper off on their corticosteroid therapy or if it's a problem with the adrenal gland itself um, we're going to attack that uh, rogue adrenal gland with either uh, medication chemotherapeutic like medication or radiation or even surgery to get it to stop overproducing the the corticosteroids that are resulting in the Cushing syndrome.